So when talking about parallelization, the topic of multi-threading must be addressed. And before we talk about multi-threading for parallelization, and it's not the same as a lot of the multi-threading you've used in the past, where maybe you kicked off a task over here that was doing something kind of indirectly related to your main application. You let it run, and when it was done, it quit. Okay, and maybe, maybe your main application needs to sort of contact a server, or maybe it needs to, say, find a file on the hard drive, but you don't want to interrupt the main tasks. You just want to sort of throw off this thread and let it do whatever it needs to do. Okay, so suppose you have some sort of process, and this is your process, and it's doing the bulk of what your application is supposed to be doing. And you need to, say, find a file on disk, and you're going to do this in such a way that it doesn't interrupt the main program. So you might spin up a thread to do this one single thing, and then the thread gets kicked off and does its thing, and when it's done, the file has been found and everything's great. But this is not the same multi-threading approach that we use for parallelization. So I created a really simple program here, and it demonstrates some pretty straightforward multi-threading. So here is where the program starts, and here I create a thread, and once that thread is created, it actually kicks off. So this thread function is going to do a lot of stuff, and when it's done doing a lot of stuff, it's going to return, which will um, stop the thread. Finally, when your program is done, you just close the thread handle, or you can close it any time after the thread is finished. So this is the really common way of multi-threading, where you, you spin up a thread, it does something, and, and then it's done. So now let's talk about parallelizing loops. Okay, this is one of the easiest ways to parallelize your code. It also provides some of the best and most readily available performance gains for your application. So in order to parallelize loops, you start by creating several worker threads. Now what happens is that those worker threads are going to divide up the work in the loop. For instance, let's say there are three worker threads. The first worker might act on index 0, index 3, index 6, index 9. So it might jump up by 3 every time since that's how many worker threads you have. And by the way, the number of worker threads are normally determined at runtime so it adjusts to whatever the particular situation is. Then maybe the second worker thread is going to do index 1, index 4, index 7, and so forth. Here I've got some illustrations to show you the process. Okay, here we've got a data array, and suppose each one of these represents an integer. Okay, now we're going to have three worker threads, a blue, a green, and an orange. Notice that the blue worker thread operates on index 0, the green worker thread operates on index 1, and the orange worker thread operates on index 2. Okay, so we, so now once that's done, they're going to move on. Okay, blue, green, orange, when they're done, blue, green, orange, and so forth on down the line, and in this way, theoretically, it's three times as fast as just a single sequential loop processing. Okay, so here I have a really simple program to show you how easy it is to parallelize a loop. The first thing I need to show you though, I'm going to go to Properties and show you that I have OpenMP support turned on for parallelization. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is decorate this with a pragma. And that is all I have to do. OpenMP will take and parallelize this loop at runtime according to how many threads and how much resources it can get. So another way to parallelize your application is with vectorization. The Intel CPUs are capable of acting on multiple data addresses with a single instruction. This is known as Single Instruction Multiple Data, or SIMD. Now I have a fairly simple animation to show you how this works. So here we have the same data array of whatever type you need. Now we have a single operation that is performing on multiple addresses or multiple memory locations. Okay, and it depends on the data size. For some data sizes you can act on up to 16 memory addresses. For others it might be 4 or it might even be 2. But then going up the line, 
it continues to act on four at a time. And this provides a tremendous performance boost. So in conclusion, parallelization provides significant performance gains. And Intel's Parallel Studio makes it very easy to add. You can check previous blogs and videos on Go Parallel for details. I've covered most of this many, many times and in much detail. You can also watch for coming blogs and videos as I will drill down much deeper and show you a lot more.